and welcome to Leroy United Methodist Church. Thank you for worshiping with us on this fourth Sunday of Advent. A few announcements to share with you as we begin our time together. Our Christmas Eve worship service will be streamed live on Facebook at 5 o'clock this Thursday evening, Christmas Eve, and it will also be published on YouTube at 5 o'clock on Thursday and can be viewed anytime thereafter. It is the tradition for us here at Leroy United Methodist Church to designate 100% of our Christmas Eve offering to missions. So this year's Christmas Eve offering will be split between the Matthew 25 Coalition and Feeding Medina County. Tonight at 6 o'clock, we will be filling the night with music and light. As we've done throughout all of Advent, we're adding more light to the front of our church. And so we invite you to come out and listen also to the music that we'll be playing from the carillon at that time. We do have fellowship time today via Zoom at 10.15, and we invite you to join us for that. And also special thanks to those who are assisting in worship this morning. We have Susan Franz as our lay reader, Rick Hawk is our video technician, and Matt Chidsey on piano with Nancy Sly on organ. And we are grateful uh, for their music with us in this season. So let us prepare our hearts for worship as Susan comes forward to lead us in the call to worship. Merry Christmas. Please join me in the call to worship. Host of hosts, from sunrise to sunrise, and generation to generation, we are your people. You have been with us wherever we have gone. You will be with us wherever we may go. You planted us in, a, in the land of flowing with milk and honey. Then you planted our salvation in Mary's womb. Jesus, who is the Christ, is planted firmly in each one of us. Our souls magnify the Holy One. Our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. Our opening hymn this morning is O Come All Ye Faithful, verses 1, 3, and 6. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I'm living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, You are the one to build me a house to live in. I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any? Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever.
We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is a sign of eternity. God with us right now. We forget that Jesus is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God, is with us. We light these candles with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into that presence, God is as close as our own breath. This is a confused and confusing world, it is a peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that knows that Jesus is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Joseph of the, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. These are the words of our side Savior. Please pray with me. Oh God, Emmanuel, you are with us. We feel your presence with us in this very moment, oh God. Open us to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Open our hearts to him that we might make a home for him and that we might find your peace. And now, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 
I love Christmas music. I love Christmas music. I've been listening to it for several weeks now. And I have been listening to it with more intention this year to bathe myself in the love, the joy, the hope, and the peace of the season. And one song that has taken on particular meaning for me this year is There's No Place Like Home for the Holidays. We are spending more time at home now, or at least we should be, in the midst of this pandemic. Home is a place where we can be ourselves. It's a place of safety and security. It's a place of protection. And that is especially true right now as we stay home to protect ourselves and others from this nasty, nasty virus. Right now, there really is no place like home, as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz says. There's no place like home. And our scripture lessons today talk about home. Home. God says, come home. That's the offer that God makes to David in 2 Samuel that we heard Susan read today. Come home. Home to me. Home to your true self. Home to your true family. That's what God is really talking about. Home. Now, David is talking about building a house, and God talks about wanting to find a home. God built in all of us this desire for home. God told David that David wasn't going to build a God a home. And then it said in those verses that we skipped over, <laughs> that David's son was going to do it. And then later, David and everyone else thought that God was talking about Solomon because Solomon did indeed build a temple as a home for God. At least that's what everyone thought God meant. Everyone but Luke, that is. Luke reminds us that God had different ideas than the rest of us. Solomon's temple was, was qu quite a structure. <laughs> it really was. And, and God apparently liked it well enough, well enough to visit. But it was never really God's home. Or so it seems anyway. For one thing, it was always called Solomon's temple. <laughs> Not God's temple, but Solomon's temple. No, God had a different son in mind when he said, your son will build my home. God was thinking of the one whom Gabriel would call the son of the Most High, the one who would reign over the house of Jacob forever, the one whose kingdom, of whose kingdom there would be no end. That's the son who would build God's home. Now, no one quite got that. David didn't really understand what God meant, and Solomon certainly didn't understand it either, but he got the construction crew together anyway. No one really knew what God meant, except Mary, except Mary. But indications are that Mary even didn't really understand it either. How could she, really? Just imagine this young, unmarried, and well, soon to be married girl. She gets this message from God. And the message is, God is coming home. Taking up residence in her. <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse me? This nothing special, this backwoods teenager was going to be God's home for a few months, for nine months. 
Talk about being a troubling house guest. Feet on the furniture are nothing compared to this. To those who are mothers, who have experienced the joy of pregnancy and birth, they know better than the rest of us about the hard realities of this event. Here we are, just, just a few days before Christmas, talking about Mary finding out that she's going to be pregnant. And then, a couple days from now, Thursday night, she gives birth. Pretty amazing, really, but, but not real. <laughs> she carried this load like everyone else. She hurt, and she sweated. She paced, and she groaned. And she struggled, and she wondered, and she worried, and she bled, and gave birth in a barn because no one was willing to give her a bed. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Well, I think the Lord has a different idea of favoritism than we do. The Lord has a different idea of blessing than we do. The Lord has a different idea of home than we do. Come home, the Lord says to us at Christmas time. Come home. David wanted to build a house for God on the tallest hill in Jerusalem where God could be removed and distant and overlook all of the people who would have to go out of their way to give obedience to God. But God wanted to build his home a little closer to the deep realities of living in this world so that we would be surprised by God right where we live. God wanted to build his home where we sweat and where we labor, where we work and where we play, where we laugh and where we cry, where our hearts are lifted up and often broken and sometimes healed. David wanted God's home on a mountain, but God wanted his home in the womb of a virgin. In, in the feed box behind that little inn in the town of Bethlehem. God wanted his home in the backwoods region of Galilee and on the roads of the countryside and in that grassy place where 5,000 people sat and ate till they're filled. God wanted his home in birthing units and wedding celebrations and dinner parties. God wanted his home in the tear-filled bedrooms and sick beds and the graveyards of his children. God wanted his home in the courtrooms and in the prison cells and on the streets of sorrow of Jerusalem and on that dark hill called Calvary. God wants his home in your home, in the living rooms, and in the kitchens, and in the playrooms, and in the bedrooms of your life. God calls to us at Christmas and says, greetings, favored ones. I'm coming home. I'm coming home for Christmas. Is there room for me in your crowded busy lives. Is there room for me? My friends, Jesus is coming. Is there room in your heart for him? Is there room in your heart for him? Amen. As we come to our time of sharing our joys and concerns with one another, we invite you to share your joys and concerns 
with us in the comments so that we might be praying with you and for you. Right here within our congregation, we'd ask for continued prayers for Mary Stephan. She remains in the hospital with COVID, but may be released to nursing care this week. We also ask for continued prayers for Bob and Barb Thrash. Both were hospitalized with COVID this week, and Bob was released to rehab yesterday, and it is hoped that Barb will be released to that same rehab tomorrow. We ask for prayers for all who are struggling in this very challenging year, especially as Christmas approaches um, and we're doing things differently. Uh, we ask for prayers for grace for one another um, and that we offer love and care to one another, to everyone that we encounter, that we can truly offer the light of Christ in all that we do. Again, we invite you to share your joys and concerns in the comments. Let us take a few moments for some silent prayer to center ourselves in God's presence. And then we will have the pastoral prayer and the Lord's prayer. Emmanuel, God with us. God who is as close to us as our very breath. God who is not distant on some high mountain, but who comes to us in the messiness and the everyday living. Oh God, Make your presence known to us, right here, right now. We come to you today, O oh God, with many things on our hearts and our minds. With the concerns for our loved ones. With the sadness of not celebrating Christmas as we had hoped with the recognition that there will be some that we cannot celebrate Christmas with this year. Family and friends who are far away and protecting one another and those who are celebrating with you. Oh God, this year is different, but this is the world to which you have come. You are indeed Emmanuel, God, with us. You give us your peace. Fill us today, O oh God, with your peace. We thank you so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, into this world so that we might know you, so that we might feel your love, so that we might have your hope, so that we might experience your joy, and we might know your peace. Oh God, thank you for Jesus and his teachings and for all that he did on his time on earth and for the life that we have through him because of his death and resurrection. Oh God, that is indeed what gives us hope and love and joy and peace. We live to you our friends, our loved ones, all who are sick, all who are grieving this day, we ask that you fill them with your peace, the peace that passes understanding. And fill us, O oh God, with your light. Help us to be bearers of your light with everyone that we encounter, that they might see you in us and might know the hope of salvation. All this we pray today, O oh God, in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who came into this world and who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. We appreciate your continued support of the ministry of this church, Leroy United Methodist Church and the broader church, as we bring hope to the people of our community and people of our world. As we put our offerings in the plate this morning, they represent the offerings that we receive in the mail, as well as those that we receive online, knowing that they help us to love God, to love people, and to serve the world. So Susan will come as we pray over our offerings together. Won't you join me? Gracious, Gracious and generous God, God we offer our gifts to you, knowing full well we have devoted so much more energy into finding the gifts for our families and much less on the gifts we offer to you. You gave Mary, an unmarried girl, a son so the world might have a savior. Her response was so simple, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. May her affirmation of faith and obedience be the gift we offer this day. In Christ we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is Thou Dost Lead Thy Throne.
coming, and he wants to make his home in each one of our lives. Welcome him, and you will know the peace that passes all understanding. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.